tucked away in our subconscious is an idyllic vision. We see ourselves on a long trip that spans the continent. We are traveling by train. Out of the windows we drink the passing scene of cars on nearby highways, of children waving at the crossing, of cattle grazing on a distant hillside, of smoke pouring from a power plant, of row upon row of corn and wheat fields of flatlands and valleys, of mountains and of rolling hillsides, of city skylines and village halls. But utmost in our mind is the final destination. On a certain day, at a certain hour, we will pull into the station. Bands will be playing and flags will be waving. Once we get there, there will be so many wonderful dreams that will come true and the pieces of our lives will fit together like a complete jigsaw puzzle. How restlessly we pace the aisles, damning the minutes for loitering, waiting, and waiting for the station. When we reach the station, that'll be it, we'll cry. When I'm 18, when I buy a new Mercedes, when I put the last kid through college, when I have the mortgage paid off, when I get a promotion, when I reach the age of retirement, I shall live happily ever after. Sooner or later, we must realize that there is no station, no one place to arrive at once and for all. The true joy of life is the trip. The station is only a dream. It constantly outdistances us. Relish the moment is a good motto. It isn't the burdens of today that drive men mad. It is the regrets over yesterday and the fear of tomorrow. Regret and fear are twin thieves who rob us of today. So stop pacing the aisles and counting the miles. Instead, climb more mountains, eat more ice cream, go barefoot more often, swim more rivers, watch more sunsets, laugh more and cry less. Life must be lived as we go along. The station will come soon enough.